Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I am going to continue playing Dream Daddy. Right now we are getting up to the new house. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown. The for sale sign is still in the yard. Yeah! With a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no longer there. Nice form, sweetie. I got a problem with authority. I'm so proud. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. Me too, kid. An ice cream sandwich. Sweet. It's 10 a.m. It was never too early for ice cream, especially if it's ice cream and coffee. Okay, so we need to unpack first. I need some coffee ASAP. Or did you even see all the dogs in the park nearby? But with coffee, I always need coffee. Gotta get my hands on a nice hot cup of the old bean juice, or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we can't pass the coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it. We walk down the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. What's wrong? Why wouldn't I go somewhere else to drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch? Not have to make awkward eye contact with other people. Because coffee is always better somewhere else. It's kind of like food. If you don't make it, it is better. At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me. And I won't feel like a little weird because technically he's not sitting at my table. And he is still very much within my personal zone. Dad. What's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and fill your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere out there, just out of sight? Now that you're the jerk off who left their mug. Dad, are you just afraid of meeting people? Yes, maybe. We walk inside. The inside of the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Final records line the walls, and patrons lounge around on well worn in couches. Cool tunes spin on the record player next to a little stage. It's a cute coffee shop. Like the area with like the record player and stuff. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? I'm sorry, this town too loose. It's mentioned in this poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time. And I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, the business is still running. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time. Now I'm standing here rambling. I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking. Man, we're in it now, and I can't stop. Me meeting new people. So what'll it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and I'm immediately overwhelmed. There's not even that much on the menu. There's like seven breakfast things, six lunch things. Can't see behind him, but probably not much. I'll have a Ooh. Godspeed you black coffee, iced tea and Sarah, a chai apple. You love chai. Mm. I also appreciate a classic latte all the time, so I guess I'll just go black. A classic I don't get it. Oh it's a pun. Godspeed you. Black Emperor is a really amazing and influential progressive rock band known for their sweeping soundscapes and... I'm doing this thing again. Coming right up. I'm free. You have a macchiato de Marco, please. Coming right up. Do you want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? Uh, medium. Wait, is a baby small big or small? 
get it and find I should change that, shouldn't I? Do I ever change that? Matt sets to making her drinks in Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's this deal? Same though. Okay, now we can see. So there's only like seven hot drinks and seven cold drinks. So he is very overwhelmed. Let the man make his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to anyways. Hey. Hey. Scott was cool once, doesn't he? This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. This place is right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable to talking to other people as you are. Match made in hand. Should totally become friends with you. Uh, I don't know. Come on, what do you say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside. I also don't go outside. I also don't talk to people. See? We're making progress. Matt sets her drinks down at our table and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda and this is my dad, Danny. Oh, right on. Please meet you both. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. We can make get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Maybe all the time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Every day. You know what? Let me get your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Working on a new banana bread recipe and I need help coming up with a name for it. I want banana bread now. Well, I think we're going to have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile. And, you know, really appreciate the uh, flavor sensations of Man Nuts Vigorous. She knows the game. Yeah, we need to give that banana bread a taste if we want us doing free creative labor. I think I would be. Sorry. I think that would be commensurate with the uh, train fest. I was gonna give you guys free banana bread anyways. Right, yes. All of the banana bread. Matt served his teacher piece. Man and I chow down. This is amazing! Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. Bananas. And more bananas. So, any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad fan puns, but I'll give it a shot. Banana bread Kennedy's, grateful banana bread, right said banana bread. Mm, really like grateful banana bread. Ah, uh, and he doesn't. I don't want to talk to him anymore. Like the Jamrock fan front of by Jerry Garcia? That actually has a nice ring to it. He says after acting like he hates it. Really? Yeah. Grateful. Banana bread. Strong decisions. That's our baby. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool. Once I said it, I realized that it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth. And maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. Creepy. See, sounds good when you say it. No, it doesn't. Don't call a stranger baby. Across the way, a man catches my eye. Oof. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. I brood with him. Our eyes meet just for a minute. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for the name, Fred. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, we're two. Yeah, in fact, we'll get fresher on the way back to the house. Got a lot on my plate right now. 
Did you know that moving is one of the biggest sources of stress for adults? You know, and bills. Is it right behind the constant fear that you smell that and everyone's too polite to tell you? Probably. Do I smell that? Man, it gives me a whiff. You're fine. Let's go. I get to work in packing the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I get some good work done. The washer dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First, move it all over. Walk around the door and open it. Yay! A handsome, clean cut man standing in the microwave, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello? Where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh, yes, hi, I'm Daddy. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van and thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Kitsy wanted me to let you know she baked them herself with poison. Joseph leans in and whispers. But between me and you, she just bring the little chocolate chips. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph can for the plate of cookies with a smile. Thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Amanda come back and she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a toddler. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you trying to raise more than two. I have four kids. That is four too many. What have you done? Oh, uh, I meant... All that. Don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude, but you were. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met in my social life is already in a tailspin. Wonder if it's too late to move again. It's gonna be too late. Oh yeah, okay. Is the missus around? Oh, not anymore. She died. Oh. Um. I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, no, that's all right. We stand there quietly for a moment, accurately aware of how awkward we both made things. I'm sorry. Can you close the door again real quick? I look at Joe's physically, but complain. After a second, I hear him knocking the door. Don't. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. But you just did. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in your community. What do you say, pal? I see. Because that sounds like a lot of fun. That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Except not really, because I don't want to leave my house. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to see you. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. You ever need to talk about stuff? I'm the youth minister at the church on the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. Did he just say wink? He did. He's winking. And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face, cookies in her hand. That was the smoothest recovery I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See? You're already fitting in freight. And after you offended him about his children, where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyways? I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas?
I don't want to see him, so let's go see this fresh air. Sitting that park down the road, I saw a ton of dogs die when we drove past. Okay, will you help me steal a dog? The boss, time I can't fit a dog in the park, it's my cargo shorts. It's physically impossible. Men can fit everything. You're breaking my heart, perhaps. Alright, I think I'm going to end that episode here. Thanks for watching.